What's up, everybody? It's your man, KJ the Great, dropping another edition of All Sports Media TV. But first, I want to say, I hope and pray everything is great your way. Now, let's talk about it. All right, y'all. It's fight week, baby. Woo! And we've got a showdown going down out in San Francisco between the former undisputed lightweight champion, none other than Devin the Dream Haney, who is 30 wins, no losses, no draws, 15 wins by way of knockout. Mm, excuse me. He'll be taking on the current two-time WBC junior welterweight champion, that being Re Regis Rougarou Progre. Don't ask me what a Rougarou is. Y'all just go look it up for yourself. Because Some of y'all been asking, what's a Rougarou? Well, go look it up. He explains it himself. I'm not going to. But uh, he is 29 wins, one loss, no draw, with 24 wins by way of knockout. Now, as y'all know, uh, pretty much Regis Progre, he, he's, he's been agitated. He's been ticked off that they have been treating him like he's the B-side in this whole fight. Even the way the name is on the banner, it's Haney versus Progre, even though he's the champion and Haney is the challenger. He feels disrespected. He feels all of that. Um, you know, so this looks like it is going to be an exciting fight, a pretty good, exciting fight. Now, as far as Regis Progress goes, his one loss came to Josh Taylor, who eventually went on to become uh, the undisputed junior welterweight champion. And um, he but he was stripped of his title and or titles. And, you know, he ended up losing to Tiafimo Lopez by unanimous decision. Badly. He lost badly. I'm just being honest. I like Josh Taylor, but I call it like I see it. Now, since that loss, Regis Progre reeled off four straight TKO wins before he had his homecoming fight against uh, Zorilla, in which he got a split decision in that fight. Now, we you, get, you back up just a little bit. You remember he signed a deal with uh, Eddie Hearn. Uh, matchroom boxing, you know, they go through the zone and all that. And he wanted to have a homecoming fight. And it was down there in New Orleans. Um, and in, in, in short, we, I'll just say, uh, Regis Prograde didn't look his best. Um, <laughs> he say he slipped. Others say he got dropped, whatever. But it just didn't look good. Um, Bill Haney, Devin Haney's father was at that fight and they feel that's the only reason why uh, Devin Haney chose to have this fight with Regis Progre is because he looked bad. Uh, and backing that up and saying that had he looked good, he probably would have looked elsewhere to get a fight at uh, Junior Welterweight. Maybe true, maybe not. I don't know. But let's talk Devin Haney. So, as you guys know, he vacated all his lightweight titles. At first, it was just the WBC where he was placed as champion, like kind of champion in recess. But uh, he eventually, uh, I did a video about this a little while back. He vacated all the titles, uh, saying that he has outgrown the weight. He's done everything he can do at the weight. So there really isn't much else for him at the weight except for a fight with Javante Tank Davis, which I still think is going to happen. But we know Javante Tank Davis does not want to come up to 140. Devin Haney is outgrown 135. So they got to find the middle ground up in there. Now, um, with that being said, Devin Haney has had a stellar last three or four years of, of boxing. I mean, he's undefeated, but we just talk like since 2020 where he be, uh, he started off these great wins. You can say great wins. I'll say great wins uh, against uh, Yuri Okis Gamboa, although Gamboa is not the Gamboa that we once knew as like the pound for pound great, but he was, you know, he could still bang. 
Um, he beat Jorge Linares. A lot of people give him flack for getting caught in that fight. Um, uh, you know, they say he got the he got the noodle legs and he was on his way back to his corner or whatnot. Uh, but he still won. He beat Joseph Jojo Diaz. Then he beat George Cambosis twice and Vasily Lomachenko. Now that's a great run for him uh, to peg himself as the A side against anybody because how many people have fought world champion after world champion type of fighter, level fighter, um, outside of him in that division? Nobody. So that being said, uh, when we talk about this fight here, Devin Haney has said multiple times uh, the weight was an issue, um, but he feels he will be stronger, faster, more durable at 140, even though 140 is still kind of tough for him to make. He does have a big frame, so I won't deny that. But um, with this fight, um, Regis Progray has made it very, very clear that it won't be just a boxer, skilled boxer versus a puncher. He's going to come in and try to match skill for skill with his punching style. Now, I think that's pretty interesting because, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Regis Progre has a tendency to try to get in the pocket, but he's flat at times. Um, Devin Haney, as you guys know, he has some bounce to him. You go back and watch his uh, last couple fights, especially his fight with um, his fight with uh, Lomachenko. He had a little bounce to him throughout the majority of the fight. And he definitely uh, he sat in the pocket um, a few times with uh, Lomachenko. You go back and watch the fight with Lom uh, Cambosis. Excuse me. On the second fight, you can see Devin Haney. He was clearly sitting down on his punches more. Definitely trying to hurt and get Cambosis out of there, although he didn't. But you can definitely see he was throwing with ill intent in that fight. Um, so as far as this fight... You know, going based off, just say they last fight. I do expect Regis Progre to look better in this fight than he did against Zorilla. I expect him to come fast, hard, and be ready to um, uh, try to throw Devin Haney off his game, make Devin Haney adjust to somebody who's bringing that power and pressure. But I think Devin Haney is going to be the bigger faster stronger guy in this fight not as far as knockout power but i mean just as far as he may have the potential to hurt him a few times throughout the fight but i also think i also don't think he's going to knock regis progray out i don't think he'll knock him out um and when i say knockout i mean like boom boom oh he's down he's out i don't think that'll happen he may um hurt him a few times throughout the fight. He may even get to a point where it's looking like, yo, the referee might stop this. But I think this one goes the distance. Uh, it's nothing wrong with that because it just proves that Devin Haney can go the distance with a heavier puncher. And it'll definitely make his case to, in the future, have that so said 50-50 split that he wants with Tank Davis. So all in all, I'm picking Devin Haney to win this fight by unanimous decision. Um, if you think it's going to be a knockout, let me know who you think will knock who out in this fight. I'm pulling for Devin Haney. You guys tell me who you're pulling for. But that's all I got for you guys. Make sure you hit that like button. Drop that comment in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Follow me on Instagram at All Sports Media TV. Follow me on my other Instagram at KJ the Great 09. Thank you guys for tuning in. Peace.